Hi, I'm Rick Streaker, Packard's National Training Coordinator. And I've got Joey Laminack, Packard's uh, product engineer with me today. And we're gonna talk about uh, some differences in construction of motors. And more specifically, we're going to talk about motors that use sleeve bearings and motors that use ball bearings. Welcome, Joey. Thanks, Rick. Joey, what kind of motor is this? What kind of bearing is in this particular motor? This motor has a sleeve bearing. Well, when I look at that, and I look at this, how can I tell that this one has a sleeve bearing? Well, aside from the nameplate, typically on a sleeve bearing motor, you're going to have end play on the shaft. Okay, now what do you mean end play? The rotor sits in a sleeve at each end of the motor, and it's allowed to slide so that when the motor is electrically energized, that rotor centers itself in the magnetic field. Okay, all right. Well, what kind of motor is this? Is this sleeve bearing or ball bearing? This one's a ball bearing motor. Uh, it has a ball bearing on each end that's permanently sealed, and that's what allows the shaft to stay in place but spin freely in the motor. Okay. Now, I look at these things. I look at this. I've got end brackets and a rotor, end brackets and a rotor. Can you show me the bearings in this one? Of course. And this is sleeve bearing, right? Yes. So if you take the end bell off of this motor, and you see inside here, there is a sleeve that this shaft fits perfectly into. Now around the sleeve is wicking. That's what holds oil in place in a sleeve bearing motor. What's that oil for? That oil allows the shaft to continuously be lubricated and slide freely in that sleeve. Okay. Now, I don't see any difference between these two in general appearance. What's, why is this one a ball bearing? Ah. This particular motor, this is your bearing right here. Okay. It's affixed to the shaft and it's permanently sealed and it fits into the end bell. That allows it to spin independently of the end bell. Okay. Now, why would I use one versus the other? So typically, sleeve bearings are used in slightly lighter applications. Uh, up to about three quarter horsepower is a good application for a sleeve bearing motor. Um, in, a, in the right application, uh, a sleeve bearing has excellent lifespan. Uh, now, once you get to either a higher load, a higher weight, um, you would want to move towards a slightly sturdier ball bearing to help support that weight of your, of your load on your shaft. Okay, okay. Now, I see motors like this though, that are real low horsepower, that are maybe quarter horsepower, and yet they might have a ball bearing in it instead of a sleeve bearing. Why would that be? So on this particular motor, this is an EC. In EC applications, there's a chance for that motor to run at low speeds. And at low speeds, a sleeve bearing is not able to properly lubricate itself. That's why ball bearing is exceptionally good for that application because those bearings are permanently sealed and never have to pick up lubrication. Oh, okay, all right. Well, what can cause these things to fail? You know, I, I hear this all the time where a guy will call and say, well, why is it that sometimes I get a brand new motor, I take it out of the box and the thing won't even turn? That shaft won't even turn. That's a very common problem. If you inspect that motor for damage, drop it, drop during shipping, bounced around, um, a lot of times that damage will show up in the form of indents in the, the motor housing and the end plate, bent studs. Um, a sleeve bearing can become misaligned uh, during shipping, and a lot of times that shaft will be, it'll be a little tight, fresh out of the box. Um, a sleeve bearing, because of its construction, does have the opportunity to loosen back up if it's not truly damaged, if it's just misaligned. Uh, you can occasionally loosen the end plates 
and realign that. Um, always be sure to tighten all of your uh, mounting bolts back down afterwards. Okay, all right. So if this is tight out of the box, it could be because maybe this thing is just misaligned because it's been dropped or Correct. maybe hit somewhere along the way. Absolutely. If you loosen that and line it back up, it may. Absolutely. Okay, good. Great. Do you see that problem with ball bearings? You don't. Uh, ball bearings are, are, are mounted a little differently in there um, since they fit in the end plate so snugly. Uh, there's no chance for them to become misaligned. Uh, dropping a ball bearing, it takes more to do damage to it, but if damage is done, um, there's, there's really no, there's no fixing it. Okay. Now, if I have an application, uh, let's say I've got a lot of dust and dirt. I've got uh, uh, a customer whose furnace is out in their, in their garage and they don't change their filters, they get a lot of dust and dirt. Would it make a difference if I used a sleeve bearing motor versus a ball bearing in that application? A ball bearing is gonna be ideal for that application due to the fact that, as we said, the ball bearings are permanently sealed. Uh, the wicking in a sleeve bearing motor often picks up that dust and dirt, um, dries out that wick, pulls moisture away from your sleeve bearing, which adds friction and shortens the life of your motor. Okay, all right. So if I've got a customer who maybe sees a lot of failures on their motor and it's in a dusty, dirty environment and they're using sleeve bearing replacement motors, might be a good thing to go to a ball bearing? That's be a great thing. opportunity to try. Okay, all right, good. So there is a difference between the ball and the sleeve bearing. There is. Um, it's easy to tell which motor is which just by that end, end play that we see in there. Uh, if I've got a heavier load, probably a good idea to use a ball bearing rather than a sleeve bearing motor on that. That's correct. All right. Well, I appreciate you explaining that a little bit to us, Joey. Absolutely. And uh, we appreciate you coming to the Packard Academy. Come back again and see what else we have to offer.